Let's talk about let's talk about a President Sanders administration. Uh, what I want to talk about is what would happen. What would be the reactions? Um, positive, negatives, that sort of stuff, right? Because there's a lot of people that are scared of a President Sanders administration. Uh, and, uh, and it's a lot of rich people, bankers. You know, uh, you, you got Goldman Sachs execs uh, that are calling, uh, uh, you know, Russiagate hoaxes and shit like that against them. Uh, you, you have corporate execs uh, that are doing the same thing. They are, um, you know, uh, attacking him on, on the regular. They are smearing him on the media. They are um, making you forget things about Joe Biden uh, that I think are very important to remember. Uh, and they are spinning a narrative because they're scared. Um, so why do they fear? Why, why, do the, why do the powerful establishment elites fear a Bernie Sanders presidency? Well, what Bernie Sanders is doing is that he's shifting the power in politics from the rich, from these people that are able to, to buy out legislation, to buy out me the media, uh, and he's shifting it down to us. That's the point of his, his presidency. The point of his presidency is to shift the power back to the people, and he's doing it not you know, by being a, a political speaker and, and playing the games in Washington, uh, but through a movement, through a movement that he has ignited um, under us, by us. That's what, you know, that's what he's done. And that's scary for those in power. And it will remain to be scary for those in power uh, because that means that they don't get to be in control they don't get to dupe us and lie to us as much because we're not falling for those tricks anymore. Uh, I've always said exploitation is a form of intelligence because I do believe that it is a form of intelligence. Uh, exploitation is absolutely a form of intelligence, but in my opinion, that it is the lowest form of intelligence. That means that you don't have any other discernible skills. Um, you know, you know how to spin a narrative and convince people using fear um, to get what you want, to keep yourself in a position of power. But once that exploitation runs out, once people stop thinking with fear, when they start thinking with their hearts and their brains and logic and, uh, and critical thinking, that exploitation runs out. You no longer have the moment to exploit people. And once you run out of that, there's no discernible skill that you can fall back on. So these people are constantly, uh, in some way, shape, or form, in that exploitation model, running in fear. Their decisions are made out of fear because if they run out of money, if we stop valuing uh, you know, riches and worshiping these rich people, what the fuck do they have left? And the answer is not a lot. They don't really have a whole lot left. So, you know, they spread these lies. Uh, there was a Goldman Sachs exec that basically said that uh, Putin, Putin's looking at Bernie because that's what he's doing. Putin and Bernie, they're looking at each other longingly deep into their eyes, holding hands, arm wrestling, but arm wrestling out of love. It's love arm wrestling. You know, that's what, that's, the Russiagate narrative is back, uh, and it's circling around the Bernie Sanders administration. Um, should have expected it. I think some of us did. But what I really wish is, uh, I wish Bernie would say something about it that isn't kind of placating into it in some way. Uh, I get that he's trying to deflect it off of his campaign so he'll kind of lean, you know, lean into being like, yeah, Russia got Trump elected, blah, 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 blah. I wish he wouldn't, though. I, I mean, I, I, think, I think Bernie probably knows the truth. Bernie understands what uh, something like the Mueller report actually said and, uh, and can make an uh, informed decision out of that. I mean, he's got to know, you know. I mean, Aaron Maté wrote, uh, who's a big Bernie supporter, by the way, uh, he wrote uh, a great article in The Nation kind of breaking down the Mueller report and showing how it's not the smoking gun uh, that proved that Russia put Trump in place. 
There's 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 lots of little um, little proofs like that. Uh, I, I talked about it a bunch in a, in a video I did uh, back in October, November of last year uh, about McCarthyism and how dangerous it is. It, you know how how we never really we never really lost McCarthyism. Uh, it just kind of was always around and, and just evolved in the background. It just changed a little bit. The dynamic of it changed a little bit. You know. And I, and I wish that he would fight the narrative. I, I, I really, really do. But the reason why the Russiagate narrative is even around is because there's fear surrounding what would happen to the economy uh, under a Sanders administration, right? And I think the Sanders economy would probably yield, in the long run, a very positive result for the people, for us, down here. Uh, you know, the ones getting censored by corporate corporate entities uh, look uh, I think I think what a Sanders economy would show is really there are two different economies in America okay uh, and I've said this before I know I, and, and, I'm, and I'm not the only one that has said this before several other people have said this. Uh, is there are two economies in America there's an economy for the rich which is all the Wall Street and the stock exchange and so on and so forth that that we the people have unfortunately bought into and helped rich people get richer. Okay, there's that economy. And then there's a second economy, uh, which is for us, the poor people. This is the way that we keep things going, right? By supporting small businesses, community-driven action. And that's all getting stomped out because, because corporations are part of that first economy and they want us to buy into it so that uh, we, we help drive rich people's wealth. That's what they want. Um, what it'll do is Medicare for All, uh, erasing student debt, social programs, all these social programs, uh, will we'll kind of create a, a, a reallocation, rebalance of the economy where we're not run by debt. And right now, it's what capitalism needs. Um, capitalism needs us uh, to be run on a debt economy. That's what it runs on. It runs on a debt economy. Um, Debt is very important for, for the way late-stage capitalism works. Uh, under a Sanders economy, I mean, you're getting rid of medical debt. You're getting rid of student debt. Uh, people are going to be able to afford shit a little bit more, right? When they don't have to worry about health, they don't have to worry about uh, student loans, they can kind of take a little bit more risks with what they want to do with their lives. You're going to yield a happier society. Happy people usually spend a little bit more money on, on, on things that, you know, people are going to start going out and supporting the local little businesses. They're not going to eat at a fucking Long John Silver's. And, uh, and that's scary. Because that just means that we're supporting each other. We're driving our economy, the real economy. And that's scary. Because now these rich people have lost their buy-ins. They've lost people to convince that that the only way that America survives is if the Waltons and the Bezoses and and the and the Zuckerbergs are are all doing well. And if they're doing well, then you're doing well because their wealth means that it's your wealth. When it's that's never been the case. If their wealth was our wealth, then they would be able to immediately fund all of, like a shit ton of these programs. And they would out of the goodwill of their hearts, but, but I don't believe that they have goodwill in their hearts. Uh, I think that they are uh, greedy and out of touch and, uh, and a bunch of hoarders that have a sickness uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't think you should want to be that rich. I don't think anybody should want to be that rich as Bezos and all these people, but like these hyper billionaires, these multi billionaires. That amount of wealth fucks up your brain and it detaches you from humanity. Wall Street and the stock exchange are just popularity contests for the rich. That's what they really are. And they want us to buy into it. About a year ago, JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, uh, Wells Fargo, they all called a crash in 2020. They said the crash in tw is, is going to happen in 2020. Uh, how do you know? I mean, they were kind of calling it out around this time, too. How do you know? How do you know? 
because you're going to cause it. They're going to do something again. That's why they can call it so confidently. Oh, the booms in the bus. We're, we're due for a bust. So we're just going to make the bust happen. That's, that's the real strength behind the Sanders economy is that it dynamically changes what the economy is and who it works for. Very scary to some people. Uh, the Sanders administration would, would, would definitely have a lot of challenges to try to achieve that, right? To try to make an economy that uh, specifically works for us. There'd be a lot, of, uh, a lot of challenges to it. And this is coming not just from The Atlantic, which has kind of turned into a neoliberal uh, paper. I, I used to really like The Atlantic. And it's kind of turned into a little bit of a, a neoliberal rag there that, uh, you know, they kind of said some oddly shitty things about uh, UBI and Medicare for All uh, that I didn't care for. They basically referred to them as like pipe dreams, like fantasy ideas. Uh, very disappointing in the, uh, to, to see The Atlantic lean in that direction. I should probably see it coming, to be honest. Um, so neoliberal paper and uh, their, their, uh, w- William and Mary DSA. A gentleman from the William and Mary DSA wrote a very excellent piece uh, that I very much liked uh, about uh, how Bernie is not the future. We we are the future. Is is, is basically the point of that that article. I, I cited it on a on a dispatch um, in, uh, a few weeks back. But uh, you know they both make uh, very similar uh, arguments in in, in that um, I you know Congress will will try to block it. You know you got you got. Mitch McConnell trying to block it, um, which I think, I think you know, if you're a conservative, you should you should fucking not vote for Mitch McConnell. You should be against Mitch McConnell uh, because he's against you, even as a conservative. He doesn't care about you. If he did, he would like put some of these bills through. He would actually he would actually let these bills. Uh, be a part of the democratic process and he's not allowing that uh, he is a congressional authoritarian that's who Mitch McConnell is um, both these articles basically said you know you got you got Mitch blocking these articles you got Republicans that don't want to work with Sanders you got Democrats that don't want to work with Sanders uh, and that's true in the current iteration of Congress uh, I think uh, very much that is true but I have a counter 2018, we saw a progressive wave uh, because of DSA-supported candidates that people backed, like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, uh, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, uh, various people. Uh, you also have Ro Khanna. Uh, Ro Khanna is very uh, excited to work with Bernie Sanders. In fact, uh, he, he put a, uh, a, a bill forward in, in Congress uh, about... Uh, AUMF, saying that if, if uh, there's some sort of violent action that needs to be done towards another country, uh, the president cannot just say that it's going to be done and, and be done. You have to get congressional approval to do it. We're going to put that as a fucking law so that you don't just fucking blow up a plane uh, that's on a peace mission with a bunch of dignitaries on board because you don't like Iran. Like, you just don't, you can't do that sort of shit. Mike Pompeo doesn't get to fucking control that. Uh, so you do have some people right now that I think are going to be excited to vote for him and uh, or, or, or work with him. Uh, you know, that whole narrative that, oh, Bernie doesn't have any friends in Congress. It's all bullshit. There's plenty of people that want to work with him. The problem is you got to get that money out of their pockets. You got to get them thinking with their hearts. You got to get them thinking with their brains, not with their wallets. You're thinking with an inanimate object. It's the stupidest fucking thing you could think with. There's plenty of people that want to work with. Uh, and we can do it again. So, you know, you got these down ballot candidates that are Bernie Kratz. Um, Look, we've already seen some victories. Let's not forget it because, again, corporate media is shifting the narrative. They're changing it. 
to make it look like we're not winning, to make it look like democratic socialist ideas are not what this country wants. Oh, it's a pipe dream. Young people, okay, you guys are living in a fucking fantasy for free shit. It's not free shit. It's asking fucking billionaires and Jeff Bezos to pay their fucking worth. You pay taxes. You pay into it. Why are we spending trillions of dollars on the military? Got an answer for that? Fucking no? Fear? Xenophobia? Power? Reallocate some of that budget. Two trillion dollars into the fucking military. Two trillion. Twenty-two billion can feed every single person in this country. Joe Biden keeps saying 32, 34 trillion dollars. Thirty-four trillion for the, where are you gonna get thirty-four trillion dollars for health care? Huh? How can we get two trillion dollars for war without any pro- and that's just stuff that's on the surface. And it's not thirty-four trillion, you fucking idiot. We can pay for Medicare for all. It's not that. It's it, it's you can easily do it. A fraction of that two trillion dollar war budget for sure. We have some countermeasures in place. Uh, look, I haven't uh, fully paid attention to the results of some of these primaries. Uh, being on tour, the workload that I have on a regular basis, getting censored by Spotify, uh, all of those things kind of, uh, you know, I, I didn't, wasn't able to focus on it. I do need to. I'll admit that. I've checked out some of the results. Um, Biden is down, or uh, Biden is up by about 140 delegates the last time I checked. That's not that many. So this narrative that Sanders is unviable is total bullshit. Uh, We're also not taking into account the massive amounts of election fraud, uh, the massive amount of votes that are thrown away uh, peoples whose votes weren't counted, 44 USB drives in Texas, in one county uh, that weren't counted. How many of those were for Sanders? How many of those were for Warren? How many of those were uh, for, for, for Tulsi, who was still in the race? Uh, you know, so they still haven't called California where Bernie is ahead. They still haven't called Washington where Bernie is ahead. Meanwhile, you get you get 10% of the votes, you know, and it, and it seems like Biden's up by two points. And they're like, Biden, he's got it. He's got the vote. He did it. Biden did it. Biden fucking won. Biden fucking won. And that's all people hear. They don't see that 10% of the votes are in. So they just go, well, I mean, if my guy's not going to win, I guess I'll just, I'll, just vote for, I'll just vote for whatever. That's the point. They want to make you... They want to make you feel like shit. They want to make you feel like you're not going to win. They want to make you feel hopeless. They want to make you feel like you can't fight back. But here's the plus point, folks. The movement is here. Whether you like it or not, the movement is here. So what we all need to get comfortable with is the fact that we're not going to be comfortable for a little while. I've lived my whole life in a lot of discomfort, <laughs> and it's uh, and I'm still here. I'm still doing okay. I got great hair. Uh, I got a pretty solid beard. You know, I got a good head on my shoulders. I'm still here. I live in a lot of discomfort. Okay, I got a weird hip thing. Uh, I got to stretch a lot. Uh, you know, I got to make sure I watch what I eat. I'm sleeping on random beds and couches okay I've dealt with a lot of xenophobic hate in my life constantly wondering when the fuck they're going to say that I'm not allowed to be in this country anymore and, and this is as a citizen too actually none of these none of these, uh, none of these concerns and fears have uh, particularly been taken care of just because I got my citizenship you know 
We're going to be living in some discomfort. But the movement is about change. The movement is about progress. The movement is about everybody. Believe, believe the same thing Sanders believes or not. It doesn't matter. He's fighting for you. All of us in the Sanders movement are fighting for you, whether you agree with us or not. You're a conservative out there that believes in, in God and all, all that's great. Cool. I, I, I don't care. I'm still fighting for you. I still want you uh, to not worry about getting sick. I still want you to not worry about uh, your kids going to college. How are you going to afford that? I still want you to not worry that if, if your car breaks down, okay, and you need a part, it's about $250, that, uh, you know, you, you got to buy, uh, you got to buy the cheap food that has a bunch of MSG and a bunch of chemicals in it. I'm still going to fight for you for that. That's the movement right there. That's not Biden. Biden's movement. Biden can say it, but he but he ain't put shit behind it. What we need to get beyond is this notion of this one person that will lead us into the into glory, right? This one person that's going to lead us into the night, that's going to fucking save the day. Look, just because Bernie Sanders gets into office does not mean that everything is solved. We don't get to just lean back and just forget you know, what this fight's all about. The fight keeps going. The fight keeps going regardless of who wins that election. The fight will always keep going. America has a love affair with anybody that le- reaches some kind of a celebrity status, right? Some kind of a celebrity status and they fucking have a love affair with them. They think they're the best. And uh, they think they represent all of their ideas. They think they represent all of these things. And and they forget that, no, one individual is not the arbiter and is not is not the, the, the conduit for all of your belief. I mean, that's, that's how Trumpers think too. Like those, those, those hardcore Trumpers, uh, they, you know, the, especially even, even the evangelicals believe that about them. Sort of the savior complex, this messiah complex. We have that as a society, I think. You know, we're looking for that one person to come save all of us. That'll fix all our problems. We don't have to do anything. Ugh. Jesus, take the wheel. Bernie, take the wheel. No, we all got to keep our hands on our wheels. Okay, let's not put it all on this one person. Bernie started a movement. Now let's keep it going. I've said this. I've said this a couple different times over the last course, of, the course of the last few months, and, it, and it's because I'm, I'm really worried. Okay, I'm really worried that uh, look, come July. We all know that there's going to be some fuckery. Nick Branagh, Eleanor Goldfield, and a few other people have started an organization called Burn the DNC. B E R N the DNC. Okay, it's like an insurance. I talked about it in in a prior video. If you haven't watched that video, go check it out. It's part of the Bernie movement. It's insurance plan. When they fuck over Bernie, hey, the movement's not done. You didn't kill us. Guess what? We're still here. We're still standing and we're still fighting back every goddamn day. I've said this once and I'll say it again. Bernie Sanders is not the be all end all of this progressive movement. We are. And we always fucking will be. So let's keep getting to work. So let's keep doing the work. Hey, folks. uh, Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, If you did, if you enjoyed the topics we discussed in this this video, uh, there's a very good chance that you will enjoy my live stand-up comedy. And I am on tour all across the country, you guys. Uh, I am going to be recording my brand-new album, 
uh, at uh, uh, in Washington, D.C. on March 20th, uh, Williamsport on March 21st, and at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival on March, uh, April 2nd through the 4th. Uh, I also have live stand-up comedy dates uh, that I will be working on a new show after the recording uh, with a bunch of brand new material. Uh, I'm coming to Baltimore, Maryland. I'm coming to Tarentum, PA. Uh, I'm also going to be in Cincinnati, Louisville, Knoxville, Tennessee, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, Richmond, Virginia, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, I'm, I'm coming all over the place. I'm going to be I'm going to be doing a, a bunch of tour dates in the next few months. Uh, but I'm also opening for my good friend Lee Camp on his book release tour. Uh, he released a new book called Bullet Points and Punchlines. If you get a VIP ticket for any of these shows, you get a free copy of the book and a USB uh, of his comedy special. Uh, so make sure you grab tickets to come see us. We're going to be in Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina. Two shows in Asheville, North Carolina, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we are also going to be in Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, coming to uh, Burlington, Vermont, Montreal, Quebec, Ottawa, Ontario. We're going to be uh, going all across the country. So make sure you grab your tickets. Go to ramennoodlescomedy.com, R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Check out the details for the show. You can check out my entire tour schedule there as well to see if I'm coming to a city near you on a solo tour or with Lee. It'll be great to see you guys out at these live shows. Come by, say hello, you know, uh, have, have a drink, uh, discuss some esoteric topics. Um, and uh, while you're on my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com, you, you might see some big orange buttons on those pages. Uh, they are sustaining membership buttons. You can, you can become a sustaining member directly on my website. Uh, there are various different tiers with various different rewards. Uh, that helps uh, this show, my uh, other podcast that has a lot more production behind it, Forkful of Noodles, as well as Taboo Table Talk and The Dispatch, as well as live stand-up comedy, the socially conscious, independent DIY comedy that I do. You will be helping uh, support that as well. And another way to become a sustaining member is by joining the Patreon over at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Every little bit helps, and patrons get exclusive content uh, that, uh, that, that only the patrons will get. Uh, another way to get exclusive content and become a sustaining member is by going to my Bandcamp page at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That gives you collections of stand-up uh, starting at only five bucks a month. Uh, so make sure you check them out. And if you have the ability to become a sustaining member, if you have the financial resources to do that, awesome. I really appreciate everybody that's already become a contributor, everybody that's already become a sustaining member. Thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, but another way that you can help this show is by sharing it sending it out to as many folks as you possibly can, sharing it out to groups, sharing it out to your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would find value in a show like this. Uh, and these are, see, these are some of the biggest ways that you can, uh, you can help increase the quantity and quality of these shows and uh, help me put out more content on a regular basis uh, to keep up with, with all of the, the news, talk about big ideas, uh, uh, talk about ideas that you won't hear on the corporate mainstream uh, networks, whether they be journalism or journalism or or comedy. Uh, so the, the the sustaining memberships and sharing are the biggest way because uh, I am getting suppressed. I did recently get censored, um, and uh, and and the way that that uh, you guys can help fight that is 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 through sharing and becoming sustaining members. I really really appreciate you guys watching. And uh, till next time, we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.